In this lesson, we're going to talk about fog. Now, there are a variety of techniques for implementing fog, and the one that we're going to use here is pretty simple. I'm going to show it to you first, so then we can actually get an idea of what we're trying to achieve. So here's the application, and this looks just like our blend fog model. We've got our textured sphere and a directional light. Notice now as I pan back, as the camera gets further away from the sphere, then that sphere becomes more and more the color of the background. Now, this is actually not done through transparency, but rather done just through simple interpolation. And that's this very simple implementation of fog. Now, I've got the grid, and the grid is not being fogged out. I'm doing that intentionally, but what I would want to do, of course, is fog all of the objects in the scene at the same distance. We would want to apply fog to all of them, and they would all fog to the very same color, maybe white. So now let's look at the implementation of the vertex shader, so fogdemo.vert. The first thing you'll notice here that's different is we've got fog start and fog end variables. And these are specified as 20 and 40. But of course, you can pass in different fog starts and fog ranges. Now, the idea of fog start, that this is the distance away from the camera at which fogging begins. Before this distance, in this case, this is 20. So uh, anywhere between 0 and 20 units, I don't have any fog. I'm just going to be the normal color of the object, whatever that lit color is. Now, fog start then says at 20 units, now we're going to begin to pull in that fog color. And the fog range says, after this amount of distance, so this would be at 60 units in this example, so 20 plus 40, at 60 units away from the camera, I am fully fogged. And somewhere between the fog start and the fog range, so 20 and 60 in this case, now I'm going to be more and more and more in fog as you get further away from the camera. All right, so let's see how we implement this. The VS output structure now includes a float for the fog amount. And that fog amount is calculated by first computing the world position inside of the vertex shader, and then taking the distance of the roll position and the camera positions. Now what this distance GLSL intrinsic does is it subtracts these two vectors and looks at their distance and computes the length of the vector. So the distance between the world position that has been transformed into world space, and that's necessary because the camera position's in world space. So how far is that? So subtracting that from the start of the fog divided by the range of the fog, and we're gonna clamp that between zero and one. So now you can imagine between 0 and 1, that sounds like that interpolation slider. So we've got 0% in fog and 100% in fog, and that's exactly what's going on here. So now let's look at the fog demo.frag. And the fragment shader now has a fog color that we're passing in as a uniform, but the rest of this stuff should look pretty darn familiar from the blend fog sample. Now, the first thing that we do is test that fog amount. If the fog amount is 1, we can short circuit all of the rest of this code. We don't have to apply any of this code because we know that this is 100% color coming from the fog amount. So why do all the rest of these very expensive operations when we can immediately short circuit the fragment shader and apply 100% of the color from the fog color? So that's exactly what we're doing here. Fog amount is equal to one. Now, otherwise, we're just gonna do the regular blend fog. And at the end of all of this, we're gonna compute the color.rgb as an interpolation. Remember the GLSL mix intrinsic, and we're going to take the color.rgb and the fog.rgb, and that slider between the fog amount. It's that simple. So with that very, very simple code, and this is the one line of code that's really different, and then this early out, we really didn't have to do the early out, it's just a nice performance improvement. And then just the addition of that fog color and a little bit of change in the vertex shader, and we can apply this same concept to any of the lighting models that we've done. And again, just I'm going to end up here with the look at this fog again as an interactive demo. So the further we get away, the more it's fogged. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about color blending.